Today's lesson is dialogue focus, discussing a winter trip. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and my name is Helen. Today, folks, we are going to be talking about taking a trip, but this is going to be a winter trip. During the winter in the northern hemisphere, well, temperatures. Drop. The weather gets cold. Who knows? It might even snow in certain parts of the world. So, you've got to take certain things into consideration if you're thinking about taking a winter trip. And that's what our two characters in today's dialogue are going to be talking about. Okay, Riley and then Jeff. They're going to be talking about or discussing a winter trip. What are we going to do on our winter trip? What's a good idea for as far as activities are concerned during a winter trip? That's what Jeff and Riley are going to be discussing. Yes, in fact, there are many choices that one can do in a winter holiday, and Jeff and Riley are going to talk about one of those choices, and it's actually a pretty exciting choice. Okay, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Discussing a winter trip, going skiing. Jeff is an American exchange student in Taiwan. He's at his friend Riley's house, and the two of them are chatting. I hate this weather. There's nothing to do here when it's cold out, and I'm tired of being indoors all the time. I used to feel that way about winter at home, but then a friend introduced me to skiing, and now I can't wait for the snow each year. Finding something you can only do in winter really makes it more enjoyable. Okay, folks, we're back. We're going to be talking about taking a winter trip, part one, and we have Jeff and Riley talking about going skiing. Jeff is an American exchange student in Taiwan. He's at his friend Riley's house, and the two of them are chatting. They're talking about planning a winter trip skiing in Japan. Not so fast there. First of all, Riley and Jeff they have to talk about winter weather a little bit, cause winter weather sometimes is pretty bad. Okay, I live here in Taipei, Taiwan, and during the winter sometimes it gets cloudy and rainy for weeks on end. It's not great. When I lived in Chicago, not only would it get really cloudy for extended periods of time, it would also get extremely cold. And sometimes it would rain, and the rain would freeze. Ooh, it's called freezing rain. And then sometimes you have snow, but the snow isn't white and fluffy. It's kind of messy and dirty. Oh my goodness, winter weather can be the worst. And Riley says what I'm thinking right now. Okay, well, she's saying what I used to think a lot when I lived there in Chicago. She says, "I hate this weather." Yes, she hates the winter weather. Sometimes winter weather is terrible. Right. Sometimes winter weather can be cold, freezing. It can be wet, and、uh, Riley hates this weather because she says there's nothing to do here when it's cold out, and I'm tired of being indoors all the time. I'm tired of staying home and having nothing to do when it's freezing cold outside. Yes, Riley does not sound like a happy camper. Luckily, though, Jeff is there now. This Jeff, it's not me. It's another Jeff. This Jeff kind of likes winter. Get this, he says. I used to feel that way about winter at home back there in America, but then a friend introduced me to skiing, and now I can't wait for the snow each year. So Jeff used to be like Riley. Oh. Gosh, it's winter again! Oh no, that means I'm gonna have to spend three months inside my house. How terrible! But then someone introduced Jeff to skiing. Yes, there's something you can do outside that is not only fun but super fun. Right. So Jeff says that 
He used to hate winter, but now that he's found a sport, a hobby that he likes to do that you can only do in winter, which is skiing, he actually looks forward to it, and he doesn't mind winter so much anymore. And he says, "I can't wait for the snow each year. Finding something you can only do in winter really makes it more enjoyable." Yeah, I wish when I lived there in Chicago that I could have gone skiing. But there are no slopes in Chicago. Chicago is in the Midwest, in the Great Plains. It's a very flat place on planet Earth, so you can't really do much skiing there. If you were in America and you wanted to go skiing, you'd probably have to go to the state of Vermont, or you'd have to go to places around the Rocky Mountains in Utah and Colorado and places like that. I believe there are some fake slopes or some man-made slopes that people have built. So that people can ski in flat places, but those types of slopes are usually quite limited. But I digress. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. I've always wanted to try skiing. Actually, you definitely should. There's nothing quite like flying down the slopes through pure powder. As a beginner, though, you would want to start on a groom trail. Is it easy to learn? It's easier to pick up than snowboarding. You might need to stick to the bunny slopes for a few days, but once you can turn and stop, you can try harder runs. Do you think you could teach me? We could take a ski trip to Japan. Great idea. 各位好，首先在第二部分我们看到的单词是 groom。这里作为动词使用，有修整、使平整的意思。例如 ，Juliet groomed her roses in the garden. Juliet 修整花园里的玫瑰花。而 groom 这个字当动词使用时，还可以指培养、训练。举例来说 ，Dan's father groomed him for a job in his law firm. Dan 的父亲让他在自己的法律事务所工作做培训。另外 ，groom 也可以当名词用，指新郎。而新娘则为 bride, b r i d e. 例如 the groom felt nervous as he waited for his bride to walk down the aisle. 新郎在等待他的新娘走过红毯时感到非常紧张。And welcome back. Before we heard Jeff and Riley talk about winter and how Riley hated winter, and Jeff telling her that winter actually isn't so bad if you can find something that you can do in winter time, and so he suggests skiing. Skiing is an enjoyable activity to do in winter, and Riley says, "Ah, I've always wanted to try skiing. Actually, so she's never done it before, and it's something that she would like to try and do." Yeah, I've always wanted to try skiing as well. I'm kind of envious right now. I've never been able to ski, but Jeff, this Jeff in the dialogue, not me, he's a skier, and it looks like Riley might just get the opportunity to ski for herself. I'm kind of jealous, but also excited for her. Anyways, next, Jeff says, "You definitely should. You definitely should try skiing." Then he says this. There's nothing quite like flying down the slopes through pure powder. So yes, not only is Jeff a skier, he is an enthusiast. Okay, I know this because what he's saying right now is extremely positive. He seems extremely enthusiastic about skiing. He says, "Oh, there is nothing like it." Flying down the slopes through pure powder. Now earlier, I used this word slope. Okay, when I lived in Chicago, the land all around me for hundreds of miles was very, very flat. Okay, that's why people like using bicycles in Chicago and in the Great Plains because it's easy to get around. It's very flat. Now the opposite of flat is sloping, flat ground. Well, the elevation doesn't change much, but if you have slopes, the elevation changes. 
a lot. So here, a slope for skiing is a place on a mountain or a hill where people can ski. But more generally, a slope is a place where there is a change of elevation. Okay, things go from low to high, like you go uphill in that situation, or you go from high to low or downhill. By the way, when people ski, they ski downhill. That's why you fly down a slope. It's physically impossible to ski up a hill unless you're Norwegian and you do cross-country skiing. Right, and Jeff says there's nothing quite like flying down the slopes because it's fast, it's exciting, and if you fly down the slopes through pure powder, that is truly an amazing feeling. It's an amazing sensation. Now, powder here means fine dust or sand. Well, generally it means fine dust or sand, but here it's used to signify fine snow that is light and fluffy. So. Pure powder could mean snow that is practically new, just fallen from the sky. Just falls out of the sky and it lays there and it's light. And when you fly through it, apparently, it flies away from you and it's beautiful and it feels really good. That's what I've heard. Yes, a、uh, powder is kind of like sand, but it's even more. It's even smaller and finer than that. Like sugar might come in grains. Okay, you might put a teaspoon of sugar into your coffee in the morning. Each little piece of that sugar is called a grain. There, yeah, those pieces, those grains are quite small, but. Let's say you have powdered sugar. The pieces of sugar are even smaller. They've been crushed or pulverized into even smaller pieces. Yeah, powdered sugar. If you blow on it, it might blow away or turn into a cloud of powdered sugar. That's how light and fine these grains of powdered sugar are, or sugar powder, I should say. Anyways, Jeff also says, as a beginner, though. You would want to start on a groomed trail. So Jeff knows what he's doing. He can go off trail and he can ski through pure powder, new snow. But as a beginner, someone like Riley should stick to groomed trail. Now here we've got the word groomed to talk about. If something has been groomed, it looks good. It has been taken. Care of yes. If you groom yourself, let's say you take care of yourself so that you look good in the morning. If you're a guy, you might shave and brush your teeth and do things like that. You might dress well and make sure your clothes aren't covered in lint. That's what grooming is all about. By the way, if you groom yourself, the word groom is a verb. Groomed here is being used as an adjective. So when we say we've got a groomed trail. We're saying that this trail has been taken care of so that it looks good and is in good working order. Right. So Jeff says that Riley, being a beginner, should probably start on a groomed trail, a trail that is clearly marked, that's clean, that's easy to ski on. So a trail is a path or a way that has been marked or beaten down so that you can't miss it or get lost while taking it. I could say this trail takes you directly to the top of the mountain. Sounds good to me. Now next, Riley has a question about skiing. She asks. Is it easy to learn? And Jeff answers her by saying, "It's easier to pick up than snowboarding. You might need to stick to the bunny slopes for a few days, but once you can turn and stop, you can try harder runs." So apparently, snowboarding—that's tough. Skiing. Isn't so tough, but you'll still want to stick to the beginner's paths for a while, or the bunny slopes. Then Riley says, "Jeff, do you think you could teach me? We could take a ski trip to Japan." And Jeff likes this idea. In fact, he says, "Great idea." Okay, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. Part two of our dialogue focus. Booking a ski holiday will be coming up right after this. Booking a ski holiday. Jeff and Riley do some research on ski resorts in Japan. From what I see online, there are a lot of ski areas in Hokkaido. Let's see if we can find a ski package suitable for a beginner, one with rental equipment and lessons in addition to the lift tickets. Here's one that looks good. 
It includes all that plus accommodation and a round trip bus from Sapporo. That does look pretty good. Which resort is it? Yukimichi Mountain. This website says that it's one of the most popular and it has amazing views from the peak. It should have plenty of fresh powder for you, too. It's in an area that gets the heaviest snowfall in Hokkaido. I'm looking at the details now. It also has a lot of beginner runs, so it looks perfect for both of us. I plan to drive a rental car when I take my vacation to Japan. 我计划到日本旅游时要租一台车。而 rental 这个字除了当形容词，同时也可以做名词使用，指出租、租金。像是 there has been a drop in DVD rentals as most people download movies online. DVD 的出租大幅降低，因为大部分的人都从网络上下载电影。接下来我们看到的单字是 accommodation 这个字为名词指的是住处住所例如 For our honeymoon, I've reserved some unusual types of accommodation like tree houses and yurts 为了我们的蜜月旅行 我预定了几种特殊形式的住宿 像是树屋及圆顶帐篷 而 accommodation的动词为 accommodate 一直顺应容纳 所以我们可以说 the hotel can accommodate about 70 guests at a time. 这间旅馆可以同时容纳约70位客人。再来,我们看到的单字是名词 round trip, 指来回往返, 常常用来修饰名词。举例来说, The travel agency will take care of the round trip train in this tour. 旅行社将会负责这趟旅程中的往返火车。另外, round 这个字可以作为形容词代表圆形的,也可以当作名词使用,指一场或一回合。像是, The moon is round and bright on the 15th day of each lunar month. 每次农历十五日的月亮是又圆又亮的。也可以说, Should we get another round before we head to dessert? 我们要在吃甜点之前再拿一轮吗? 今天的最后一个单字,我们看到的是名词 snowfall,指降雪量。例如, since it's the most northern city in Japan, it gets the most snowfall. 由于它是日本最北方的城市,它拥有最多的降雪量。Okay, welcome back. So before we had Jeff and Riley talking about skiing and Riley suggested taking a ski trip to Japan and having Jeff teach her how to ski. And Jeff thinks that that's a great idea. Now here in part two, booking a ski holiday, we have Jeff and Riley talking about organizing their ski trip in Japan. Yeah, Jeff and Riley do some research on ski resorts in Japan. By the way, here a resort is a place where people can go on a vacation. Okay, a resort usually contains a hotel and other places where people can go and have fun while on vacation. So if you go to a ski resort, you go on your ski trip, you go to this resort, the hotel will be there, a lodge will be there, and they'll have the slopes and places like that where you can ski. Anyways, Jeff says, hmm, from what I see online, there are a lot of ski areas in Hokkaido. Let's see if we can find a ski package suitable for a beginner, one with rental equipment and lessons in addition to the lift tickets. Yeah, before I said how you can't ski up a hill. That's true. You can't ski up a slope, so you'll have to take the ski lift. You'll have to have lift tickets to get up to the top of the mountain. Now, before we move on, we've got the word equipment to talk about. When we're talking about equipment, we're talking about the tools that are needed to do something. Now, one note. You never say equipments, okay? When you go skiing, you're going to need your skis and your ski poles, and you're going to need the proper clothes. All of these things would be considered your ski equipment. You would not say, oh, yes, this is my ski equipments. No, it's not, okay? You have pieces of equipment, but not equipments, not ever. Right, and you may also have camping equipment, safety equipment, for instance, if I want to go camping, I need to buy some camping equipment. 
There you go. Now, Riley is looking online. She's doing some research as well. And she says, hey, here's one that looks good. It includes all that plus accommodation and a round-trip bus from Sapporo. And Jeff says, hmm, that does look pretty good. Then he has an important question. Which resort is it, he asks. And Riley replies, Yukimichi Mountain. This website says that it's one of the most popular and it has amazing views from the peak. It should have plenty of fresh powder for you too. It's in an area that gets the heaviest snowfall in Hokkaido. So it seems like Yukimichi Mountain is perfect for both Riley and Jeff. There you go. Jeff says, hmm, I'm looking at the details now. It also has a lot of beginner runs or bunny slopes. So it looks perfect for both of us. Hmm. It sounds like they figured everything out. Jayo, Riley, and Jeff, have a good time on your ski trip. Anyways, that's it for us for now, but don't go away. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wing. There's nothing quite like flying down the slopes through pure powder. 没有什么比得上这个穿越纯净的白雪从斜坡上一跃而下了。好，那么句子里面的powder在这边它是指粉状的雪、细雪。那这边要介绍的句型是 There's nothing like 加上名词或动名词，意思是没有什么比得上什么什么，或者是最好的莫过于什么什么。这样的句型啊，它是用来强调某人或某事物是最棒的。那课文的句子里面，它加上副词quite，表示完全的、彻底的。好,来造两个例句。There's nothing like a good cup of coffee in the morning. 没有什么比得上早上来一杯好喝的咖啡了。再看个例句。On a hot summer day, there's nothing quite like going for a swim. 炎炎夏日,下水游泳就是最棒的。好,那接着Riley就问说,容不容易学呢? Jeff说, It's easier to pick up than snowboarding. 意思是比学滑雪板简单。同学们应该都知道片语 pick up 可以用来表达说拿起啊、捡起东西，或者是去接人啊、载物品啊，也可以表达购买东西等等。不过 pick up 在课文里面它是指学会，通常是用来指慢慢从环境中或是某个机会当中学会，而不是透过正统的方式学习。例如， she picked up a few Japanese phrases on her trip to Tokyo. 她去东京旅行的期间学会了一些日文用语。好,那在对话的第三部分 Jeff和Riley在网络上研究日本的滑雪度假村 Let's see if we can find a ski package suitable for a beginner One with rental equipment and lessons in addition to the lift tickets 我们来看看能否找到适合初学者的滑雪套装方案 除了缆车车票之外,还有提供出租装备和课程的方案 好,那么句子里面的 in addition to 它表示除了什么之外还怎么样？那它是介系词，后面要接名词或动名词。举例来说，I'd like apple pie in addition to French fries. 除了薯条之外，我还要苹果派。那顺便补充一个用法， in addition. 好，后面没有to哦。In addition, addition 是副词，它表示此外而且。那摆在句子里面呢，它用逗号跟子句隔开。举例来说。the magic show was fantastic. In addition, the tickets didn't cost much. 那场魔术表演很精彩，而且门票也不贵。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天单词吧。Groom. Every night, special machines groom the ski trails so that the snow is flat and even. Resort. Residents hope that the new resort on their island will bring much-needed jobs. Equipment. The bowling alley rents equipment for those who don't have their own. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But, as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I'm Helen. See you, See you next, next time. time.